if you are creating illustrations for a children's book, you might like to know a shortcut into making pictures for your page that isn't going to take you three billion years to complete. Hey there fellow space cat, it's Jules here making another video of me creating something while explaining where I'm going to put it in a book. This time it's all about how to create a vignette. First of all, you might be wondering what the heckity heck a vignette is. According to the dictionary, it's a small illustration that kind of blurs its background without a definite border to the edge. In other words, something that looks a bit like this. You might like to use this to break up the rhythm of your story or to illustrate a point in the text or as a decorative repeating pattern, for example, for chapter beginnings. This week, as part of my series on folklore and fairy tales, I'm making a couple of vignettes for Little Red Riding Hood. I'll be using my trusty Fudenosuke pen for any outlines, but I'm going to do something a little bit different for some of the textures. Hmm, I might be using a collage. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Ah, first up, a lovely cup of coffee. Hmm. A quick preamble about how I do this work. The first job is to do a very rough drawing and then a much nicer and more professionally acceptable tracing through of that first rough. I love this little wolf guy, by the way. He's got quite the characterful face. Next up, I need to trace that second rough through onto watercolour paper and I'm using my Tombow Fudenosuke hard tipped brush pen to do this. It is really important to let this dry properly for an hour or so before you attempt any painting on top, otherwise it bleeds and you end up crying. Well, this is going to be a little bit different this time because I'm going to make some sort of texture on this paper. This is actually quite thin watercolour paper because I'm going to cut it out so into the shape that I want so I don't want it to be really thick so it causes a shadow. I'm going to try it on watercolour paper and I'm going to try it on just normal cartridge paper as well to see which one comes out best. I'm going to give them a quick blast with a hairdryer and what I want to show you is a little super duper trick. When you're blow drying it with a hairdryer, dry it on the front and the back. It might sound a bit crazy to do both sides but actually what it does is it stops it from buckling quite so much. So see how still pretty flat both sides. And this is the watercolour paper. This is the cartridge paper, which has not fared quite so well. Once I've let the textured cloak material dry, I'm cutting out the right shape with a fancy pants scalpel. This one has a finger handle. And now to the story itself. Granny was poorly. She was suffering from a bit of a sniffle. Hachoo! Little Red Riding Hood's mother collected together some apples and herbs and tinctures to make Granny feel better and put them in a basket. Little Red, I need you to do something for me, said Mother. Be a good sausage and pop off to Granny's with this basket, would you? Oh, Mum, moaned Red. I'm halfway through a volcano Minecraft build. Can't I do it later? No, said Mother. Turn that wretched thing off before I pull the plug out. Now, get off your bottom and get yourself over to Granny's. Sulkily, Little Red turned Minecraft off and pulled on her cloak with a huff. <sighs> and stay on the path, Mother called out of the door after her daughter. It took Little Red 
a while to enjoy the peace of the forest. There was still a little dew scattered across patches of grass and the birds were twittering to one another. She picked up a stick and swung it at the nettles and wildflowers that bordered the path. In the distance, a cunning wolf caught a sniff of something interesting. It was sort of sweet and citrusy, like a perfectly ripe clementine. He popped his head above the row of ferns and saw, to his delight, a little girl. She must have been about ten years old, young enough to be tasty, but not old enough to be too chewy. He silently made his way over to her. Oi, oi, he said, making her jump. Oh, hi, she replied. What are you doing lurking in there? You know, just being wolfy, he said. Where are you off to? Visiting my grandma, said Little Red. Well, before you do, can I invite you to hop into my warm cauldron? You look a little chilly this morning. Little Red shook her head. She wasn't falling for that one. Go away, she said, wafting her hand. You smell like wet dog. And off she trotted, keeping to the path, just like her mother had told her. The wolf was furious. Wet dog indeed. How very dare she. We'll soon see who smells. And knowing where the only grandmother in the forest lived, he decided to head off the little girl and think of a plan on the way. Little Red was pondering what to do with the rest of her day once she'd done this job. There were some cookies in the cupboard to eat and more games to play on her iPad. She knew her mum would ask her to tidy her room, so she was busy devising reasons not to do it as she pulled Grandma's front gate open. Weirdly, the front door was ajar. Oh well, she thought. I guess Grandma was expecting me. Yo, Granny! She called as she walked in. It's me, your favourite granddaughter, with a basket of gold knows what that Mother thinks will cure your cold. Personally, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I mean, that purple stuff stinks. Blech. I'm in the bedroom, dear, said a croaky old voice. Grandma was laying in bed in her little house on the prairie style nighty and nightcap. Little Red pushed the door open and was horrified by what she saw. Crikey, Grandma, you need a bath, she said. I'm too ill for a bath, dear, said Grandma. Little Red saw Grandma's eyes were not her normal eyes. Crikey, Grandma, what big eyes you have. All the better for seeing you with, croaked Grandma. Little Red noticed Grandma's ears were not her normal ears. Crikey, Grandma, what big hairy ears you have. All the better for hearing you with, squeaked Grandma. Little Red, although young, was not stupid. This was not her grandma. She looked at the unusually long dentures protruding from the mouth. She knew exactly who this was. Crikey, Grandma, what big teeth you have. All the better for eating you with, screeched the wolf impersonating Grandma as he leapt up off the bed, shedding the white poofy nightgown and hat. His intention was, in one stride, to spring to Little Red's side and gobble her up before she knew what was happening. However, Little Red was more than ready. She'd been watching Jackie Chan films since she was little, and in one fell swoop, Karate chopped him and tumbled him out of the open window and into the water butt below. The wolf was so shocked at finding himself in a big vat of cold water that he could barely breathe. <gasps> Red found Grandma tied up in the wardrobe, looking pretty sorry for herself. She helped the old lady out and put the kettle on for a nice cup of tea to calm her nerves. She could hear the wolf crying about being wet all over 
as he hurried off down the garden path and back into the forest. Red opened the front door. And don't you come back, she yelled, or I might give you a proper bath. Hmm, little Red and that pesky wolf really do make a great story, so maybe one day I will make it into a book. Currently, I am knee deep in Vincent and the Mermaid. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Next week I will be looking at the common mistakes that we make when first we self-publish. And believe me, I have done most of them. Until then, I'm off to lace a lace wing because apparently they can only do buttons. I will see you next week. No, 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 no.